and welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Adam Navis, and with me is Liz Wade. Hello, Liz. Hi, Adam. Today we're talking about the program, The Hidden Life of Vincent Van Gogh. Now, you might hear some people say Van Gogh. Same person, different pronunciation. This is a very interesting, we should, we should talk about this a little bit later, but yes. So we, there are definitely different ways to pronounce Van Gogh. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I'm going to say Van Gogh. Okay, if, well, we'll save that conversation for yes. a second. If you haven't listened to that program, make sure you check it out. Uh, we'll put it in the links below or up above. Um, if it's your first time here, welcome. We always say that our Spotlight audience is some of the best people on the internet, and we love having you here. Mm -hmm. um, make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, you like and subscribe. Uh, it's a great way to make sure all our content is you know, coming there right to you, making it easy for you to uh, have that. You can follow us on social media and check out our website. If you've never gone to spotlightenglish.com, there's a lot of resources. You can follow along uh, with the script there and there's nice pictures and images and it's just a great way to engage, take your English learning to the next level. Um, yeah, so Liz, we are going to do something that's a bit of a challenge today, okay? Oh, okay. We are going to talk about a visual thing. Yes. But we're going to use words to do it, which is yes. a challenge. So we're talking about a very famous uh painter. I I believe he, Impressionist. he was primarily a painter, right? I don't maybe he Yes. Did other yeah, forms. although he did do I mean like many artists, right? Like he experimented with different forms of drawing and painting yeah. and and things like that. So let's talk about uh why this why did we pick this artist to make a spot? Why, why would this be an interesting spotlight program? So I think, um, well, Van, let, let's talk about his name first. Okay. Uh, after I say this, I think that Van Gogh, which is the U.S. pronunciation, is a very famous artist uh, throughout the world. So he was um, from the Netherlands, but he did a lot of his work in, in France, in Paris, um, and he has very famous works. Um, there's uh, a lot of him as a self-portrait. So he's got sort of orange hair um, and he's turned to the side a little bit. Um, there's a very famous painting uh, called The Starry Night, where there's a sort of, um, I think it's a tree. It's a tree on the side. Uh, what well, would be on, on this side, uh, if you're looking at the screen, um, with some like swirls in, in yellow and blue and orange over a city. Um, and then there's another one where uh, he's in his, he's not in his room, but it's of his room with a bed and a chair. And then another very, very famous Van Gogh painting with a pot of sunflowers. Mm -hmm. So I he think He did a lot that, of sunflowers. A what? He did a lot of sunflowers. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think that many of those paintings are recognizable. So people can actually think about them, even if they can't see them in uh, in an audio program while they're listening. Right. Um, but also, I think that he dealt with a lot of things in his lives in, in his life that many people experience in their own lives, mm -hmm. um, which is mental illness. And so how do you sort of talk about a person with mental illness and their, their brilliance and things like that? Um, so that is why I think this is an interesting program, but I did want to talk about, especially because we have, uh, we have listeners and viewers who, think a lot about how words are pronounced, right? right. And we have uh, listeners and viewers from all over the world. And our Dutch viewers are probably saying, oh, you do not say Van Gogh. That is all wrong. Yeah. Um, and actually, when we were voicing this program, when we were reading the program to be recorded, um, we had a conversation about this, how we would pronounce Van Gogh. Because in the States, we do just say, we say Van Gogh. We don't say the, uh, the G-H at the end. Mm -hmm. But in the UK, the accepted pronunciation is Van Gogh. So 
But neither of those is correct. Right. But our sort of, our mouths do not really make that sort of sound correctly. So I'm going to give it a try, the correct pronunciation. Um, and it is sort of like, it's sort of in the back of your throat when you make that G sound, the So you say fun, fun, hoch. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. So um, you can see how much trouble I had pronouncing it. <laughs> um, I really encourage encourage our Dutch viewers and listeners. Uh, let me know how I did. I do have some Dutch heritage, so maybe it's coming through. <laughs> maybe. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Your your um, your your enthusiasm is coming through. Yes, exactly. I love thinking about how words are pronounced and like pronouncing names correctly. But you will notice if you listen to this program that we did say Van Gogh, um, for clarity, for ease, um, and to make sure we were all saying the same thing. So um, I am sorry to our Dutch listeners that I just uh, made that word terrible, but um, we tried. Yes. Okay. We, we, we touched on that point and now we will not yeah. argue about it anymore. Yeah. You can say whatever you want. Anyway, um, what, so one... getting back to why we talked about this program, about yes. those paintings. Have you seen those paintings, Adam? I, I have. And I, I wanted to talk about that because um, there are many, many painters in the world. And as yeah. someone who's not a art expert, I love the idea of things changing through time and people, you know, changing things. And um, Van Gogh's, uh, what he's most known for is not a, it's not like he painted like you would take a picture. Like, you know, right. there's, there are certain painters and they're very skilled and very valuable where it looks so real. Like, like a it, photo. It looks like, like a, a photo. Like you just took a, a, a photo and it's almost indistinguishable from that, especially if you have some distance and, and that's really admirable. But um, Van Gogh was not this kind of painter. He really focused on what he felt about the thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is the way he used paint and the way he used his brush. It wasn't uh, a one-to-one, -one, this is real, so, it, so uh, I see it in my painting the same way I see it in the world. It was, yeah, how the artist saw, right? Am, I, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, yeah, not like maybe with his eyes, but maybe with his senses. Yeah, there was a lot of emotion involved in that. Um, so some of the self-portraits are very like, you could see that the mental health, there was some strain and some stress in these figures of himself um, right. that you can't, that it's easy in that way, but also even the starry night seems there's movement to it in a way. Yes. It, that's what I was just going to say. Yeah. So then that's so hard to, to, um, you know, one of the things I like about that is it feels like, well, anybody can paint in that style. And I don't right. mean like, well, anybody can paint in that style like yeah. a little kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's valuable to express yeah. yourself, even if you can't, like, I'm not a great artist. Like I can't, I can see in my brain what I want it to, to be like, yeah. but if I draw something, it doesn't do that. But if I can just take the energy about how I feel about that thing, I feel like, well, maybe that's a that's an okay entry point to... Yeah, you could produce something. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just about technical proficiency, but about um, the human experience in some way, or my individual way I see yeah. things. You brought up a good point about the um, the self portraits that I thought was really interesting. Um, you know, I described one earlier in this in this program where um, he's like kind of looking to the side, and so you see. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the exact profile here. Yeah. Um, you see, like sort of the side of his face, and I believe he's looking. Um, but what I think is really interesting about that, and if you think about him painting with his feeling and mm -hmm. thinking about, um, you know, all of the struggles that he's experiencing, when you paint a self-portrait, you might paint it like this, right? right? Where you see the person straight on and you, you're looking at um, 
at all of you. Right. But if you're if you're looking at somebody like this, yeah. um, you don't actually see me full on, right? You just see like part of my face mm-hmm. or um, and things like that. So I I think that's really interesting because he did actually paint. I mean, many of these self portraits. I want to say in the hundreds. Um, but there are many. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually a hundred or over, but um, I actually got to visit the Van Gogh Museum in uh, in the Netherlands, mm. and so they have a whole well, they have many rooms, right? But one room, a whole corner, is just self portrait after self portrait mm. after self portrait after self portrait, um, and they're all very similar. Hmm. Not only because he looks the same, right? Yeah. Um, but because he's just trying to get that that right thing. I don't know. Like to see, I think that's really interesting about art as well. Well, and I think, you know, what that art is, um, you know, for, for most artists of Van Gogh's level, like they're working out some of their interior life, right? Like you don't paint that many self portraits if you just want to make money. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think this whole issue of mental health and expression, artistic expression is very interesting because there's many people who say, well, I'm an artist, so mental health is helpful. Or I, you know, live a wild lifestyle because that's what the artists do. They do drugs or drink alcohol. And then there's other people who say, no, 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 that doesn't make you a better artist. That is just what maybe a a crutch or something that, that helps you get through your day, but it doesn't actually make you a better artist. And there's a great, um, there's a great quote in, um, that Van Gogh said, if I could have worked without this terrible disease, what things I might have done. Yeah, That's part of the program. Yeah. And I thought, you know, sometimes we think, oh, these twisted geniuses whose mental disease or mental health um, drove them to do great things. But that might not be the experience of the person uh, who's actually doing right. the painting. Yeah. Um, well, and what I think is really interesting tied to that is that he actually, um, he committed suicide. He killed himself um, because of this mental illness and he, he couldn't take it anymore. But he died thinking he was a failed painter, yeah, like a failed artist um, because his, his paintings were popular, but they weren't worldwide popular yet. Um, and so like how, I don't know, it makes me feel really bad for him, you right. know? To, to have this brilliance, but also this pain, this exquisite pain, yeah. um, but not know that he was valued and, yeah. and worthy. Yeah, that's really sad. Well, let us know in the comments below if there's something in your life that you would pursue and you would do uh, regardless, or that you feel like you really, it's what's your passion? If it's painting, yeah. let us know. Um, you know, we'd love to check out some of your work. If it's something else like music or singing or, uh, I don't know, sewing, uh, let us know uh, what that might be. And Or maybe you're sitting there and you have had success and maybe you're a famous painter. Let us know that yeah. as well. Um, well, and I also think it's important, Adam, for us to say that if you are having mental health issues and you're thinking about um, about dark things like that, you should really, you, you can get help and, and to have hope and to know that things aren't like that forever. Yeah. Um, there are, there are resources in every country in, in many, many cities. So, um, please find a friend or, uh, find a resource in your area so that you don't have to suffer alone. Yeah. It's a great place to end. So make sure that we don't, you know, let's end it here by saying, We'd love for you to, you know, like this video, but we would rather maybe take take you to, uh, you know, if you if you know somebody, reach out to somebody who you think might be um, struggling today, and give them a word of encouragement, and you know, just offer that little bit of hope. Um, and of course, that's what we try to do on Facebook, here on YouTube, mm-hmm. and on our website, SpotlightEnglish.com. And for Liz and myself, until next time, we hope you listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.